and then Hurricane Ida hit. Everybody clear on the game plan? What we're gonna yes. do? We're here in Homa now. I wanna show you this loss. It's the only word I can come up with is it's it's wrecked. Yeah, we're gonna have to do some demo. Man, it was a good thing that we showed up when we did. This lady, she's really gonna need her help. Wow, this is bad. They're not always on your side, and you're not always in good hands. My name is Bo Williamson, and I am a public adjuster. I stand up for homeowners when they have insurance claims. Our headquarters is in Panama City Beach, but our fight is nationwide. Sometimes insurance claims can be through the roof. However, insurance companies don't always wanna pay you. That's why I'm here. Living the Christian life and dealing with this crazy world around me, one thing I've learned is someone has got to stand up for the little guy. This is Insurance Wars. After Insurance War season one aired across the panhandle of Florida on television, on social media, and so forth and so on, everybody loved this show, everybody knew who we were, and then Hurricane Michael hit. Category five hurricane hit Mexico Beach, Panama City, and the surrounding areas right next to our headquarters, and we decided let's just delay the filming and, and help all these people, which we did. We helped thousands of people, and then Hurricane Ida hit. Hurricane Ida, strong category four. I think they're gonna up it to a category five, same way they did Hurricane Michael. And we had to deploy to Louisiana, to our office in Homa. They just said, look, we're seeing widespread damage everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's blue tarps on houses, there's blue tarps on commercial properties. We are here, we have staff members that are local to Louisiana. We have an office set up in Homa. You know, we're here to do what we do best, which is help people. Uh, that need our help when they have an insurance claim. Everybody clear on the game plan? What we're gonna yes. do? We're here in Homa now. We got Thibodeau, Raceland, um, Galliano, La Rose, those areas were hit really, really hard. This, Storm for a lot of people. This is their first storm ever. It's somewhat of a traumatic experience. These are those people's lifelong investment. This is their home that's been damaged. Don't forget this when we're out talking to them. We're here to help people get these insurance companies to pay what they're supposed to pay. Susan, don't forget um, the commercial lead on the yes, hotel. Sir. We got to go check out. We set up a new office in Homa. We've got local people uh, that live here. We're not all transports from Florida. I'm really excited about this office. It's bigger than we need, and we got a lot of work to do to get it finished, but it's in a great location. Homa was seriously disaffected by the, by the uh, hurricane, and it's really accessible to other areas that, that need a lot of help. Emil, we've got the, the contractor meeting in New Orleans yes, later today. Yes, that's right. So that's a lunch meeting. I think he's got some clients that have already gotten some bad feedback. Mm. So. Yeah, we're going to get on top of that. So about one third of Louisiana got affected by the storm, and we hit the ground. It was ground zero. Blue tops, homes destroyed, chaos. Not just in physical property, but emotional ground zero, financial ground zero, devastation wherever we looked. Everything was shut down. There were no shops that are open. Gas was scarce. Food was scarce, and everybody was trying to recover after a horrendous event. My first. Hurricane was actually in Panama City and it was a her category five. It was devastating. It looked like a bomb went off. And then Emil and I drive into Homa in the Grand Isle area and it's the same thing again. It's devastation everywhere you go. There are piles that are eight to 10 feet tall on the sides of the road where they're waiting for them to be picked up and taken away. There are people whose lives changed in 24 hours, never to be the same again. My experience is, it takes a fight to get them back into their house again and to get that house fixed. Give everybody uh, updates on Slack, on the company thread. You sign something up, put it out there. Hey, got, it, got this commercial deal, got this residential deal, so forth and so on. And that way people can play off your momentum. A lot of people are in the field right now signing up LORs. That's what we need to do. You need to get yeah. out there and go. Yeah, don't forget guys, there's not a lot of public insurance adjusters in the state. There are none that do what we ago. do. Um, and even those PAs are here, they don't have the infrastructure we have for the most part. And so um, we've got a great product, we've got a great service we can provide to people. And What's that's interesting fact that we have, we have more public adjusters at Noble 
than the entire city of Louisiana has resident public adjusters. People we're talking to are absolutely clueless. They need assistance. They're reaching out for help. And it's great to be able to represent a product that's, that's helpful and a company that has integrity. Let's keep all this in mind. Let's get out there and kill it. Any questions? Let's do it. Yes. So the laws in Louisiana are different for public adjusting. I mean, the statutes that regulate us. And so that's the reason why I'm meeting with uh, William Weatherly. He's uh, working with Morgan Law Group on the Hurricane Ida storm to help the, help the Hurricane Ida victims. And so just have some questions for him. Want to get some clarification on some things. Going to meet and uh, get some fresh air and discuss all of these things I want to talk to him about. William, in other states, public adjusters, we can do, we do everything claim from beginning to end. But as you know, in Louisiana, the statutes say that our job is to evaluate and appraise the loss. And so basically what we're doing is we're bringing engineers, moisture mappers, mold testers, any kind of thing we need for documentation purposes, take all the information, put our itemized detailed estimate together to, you know, for submission of the proof of loss. But at that point, we have to have attorneys come in. That, that's, where, that's where you come in. Well, yeah, unless they pay you right away, right? So, let's say never do. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a two-fold process here in Louisiana. You or a public adjusting firm will help put together the estimate. Without that, you can't submit the claim. Then to get the claim th through the rest of the process, you need an attorney. Right. And that's what we at Morgan Law Group do and a lot of other attorneys here in, Miss in Louisiana do. Mo, there are two statutes in Louisiana that are really helpful. To, to us, to both of us, and getting these insurance claims paid. You got 22 1892 okay. uh, and 22 1973. Gotcha. Uh, they're similar, uh, but they're different. 1892 uh, is a mandatory penalty statute if the insurance company doesn't do things that they should do. Nice. Uh, and mostly nice. it says if you don't pay on time in 30 days, the amount that reasonable minds could not differ about then there's a 50% penalty that kicks in. And, I love that. And possibly attorney's fees. Nice. So, so uh, it's very- That's huge for the, it's very important. the homeowner, the insurer, the business owner, the property owner, that's huge. Yeah, it's wonderful that that statute's there, that law's there to, to help move these claims along, because, and it does. Uh, so the insurance company has to act quickly, and they should act quickly when disasters hit and hurricanes hit and people's, people's lives are turned upside down. They, they need their money quickly to rebuild. Well, let me ask you this. Are you guys ready to go? You ready to come in like as soon as the insurance company, we see that they've underpaid, we see they're not gonna do right, you guys are ready to come in immediately? Well, yeah, I mean, we, we are, and that's what we do. Of course, you got to get your proof of loss filed within 180 days, typically, after, yeah. after a disaster declaration. It's extended to 180 days. Uh, then you start the process of, of trying to push back on the insurance company about why they haven't paid you right. and and make them explain their position. Okay. Uh, and, and if you can't agree on that, then it's time to either go to appraisal or file a lawsuit. Well, listen, William, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready to get going and, and, and partner up with you guys and then let's help these homeowners and these business owners. Well, it's something I'm really passionate about. Uh, you know, I've, I lost my house everything mm -hmm. I had in it in Hurricane Katrina. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know what it's like. I can empathize with these people. I know what they're going through and what they're thinking and feeling. And it's, um, they, they need help. And that's what we're here to provide. Well, let's get together and, and, and help these people. I look forward to it. Nice seeing okay. you again, nice, buddy. Nice seeing you, buddy. All right. Okay. I'll see All right, so. Look at that McDonald's sign, absolutely red. Every one of them's like that. Yeah, that's more like a McDonald's sign. <laughs> 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 so what? Uh, what have you? What do y'all got planned today? What do got? So I mean, we're running into folks that are, are really, really hurting. I mean, we were with a lady yesterday, and she was just broken. Her husband's out of town. He's not helping her. Her home is destroyed. And she's, she's struggling emotionally. You know, part of what we're doing is yeah. giving them some, some emotional support with what they're going through. Yeah. And we're starting to get those checks in, which are magically just under deductible or again, just over deductible. Again, that crazy? You know, it's outrageous, isn't it? We've never seen that before, have we? Yeah. <laughs> Every storm. 
Yeah. Yeah, I talked to uh, I talked to one of our other field PAs. Said he showed me some pictures. The house had a hole in it. Uh, probably I could probably walk through the hole. And the insurance company gave her thirty four hundred dollars. Oh, I saw a picture of that thirty four hundred. Thirty four hundred bucks. That's crazy. Duct tape. And one of the challenges is so many folks don't know what a public adjuster does. And when we come into a market, a whole lot of it is education. You know how we can help, how we can help them with their claim, get what they need to be made whole again. Yeah. Well, I know Insurance Wars is uh, it's airing like six days a week, Sunday through Friday now here, so they should get educated pretty quick. We're hitting billboards. Um, you know, we have one company's already, they're already going up. Another company, big billboard company, they're, they're having trouble fig figuring out which billboards are even standing. Have we signed them up? Because I've noticed all their billboards are gone. That's a good question. I think the answer is no. And we're going to drive so many more phone calls. Our business, the, the billboards, our, our signs in the road, giving out cards, we're going to drive a lot of phone calls to the office. Well, and even like last night, we're starting to see this again. We went to go meet with one couple yeah. and they brought somebody else in so really we were giving right. a presentation to more than one person because yeah. they had no idea right. how we can help by the time we finished we had both families yeah signed that's up. what's happening to me yeah. Yeah. i'm getting um i'll go speak to one client and they in large part what i'm finding is people just don't know what to do no. and they're just when you come in and you say here's your plan here's your action plan here's what we're going to do i think they just feel better that they now know something. Yes. And they have an idea of what to do. Yeah. Well, you know, I say our best referral source is the insurance company. <laughs> yeah. they, they drastically underpay yes. and then people's like, yes. what do I do now? Yeah. Right. Then we come in with expertise and tell them what to do. Yeah. It's, it's a no brainer. Like when the tree companies are taking the trees off the houses and off the fences and so forth and so on. And then the insurance company says, oh, well, we need an itemization of the equipment used on the uh, so what do you mean? You know, if the insurance company was going to pay the claim correctly, they would have done so by now. But they haven't. So they're looking at stalling ways. That's why we need to get out there. Folks need us. They need what we do. And it's awesome that the state of Louisiana actually has statutes for the benefit of the property owner. Yeah, there are some favorable statutes here. We got some attorney meetings to tighten up some understandings on some things. And then also, uh, but we got to meet Marianne today out at the hotel. Oh, that's right. Nice. I want to I show you this loss. It's... The only word I can come up with is it's it's wrecked. I mean, I will we'll get the funds he needs to do the repairs, but it's bad. It's bad. So I've got this new commercial claim that I'm working on. Uh, it is a hotel, uh, severely damaged. There's structural problems, and I want to take Bo over there to take a look at it, uh, kind of get his thoughts on uh, kind of a strategy, uh, all the documentation we're going to need as far as timing and that sort of goes. I wanted to meet Marianne there and see if there's any kind of words of wisdom we can impart to her that will uh, that'll help. But the property owner is, this is his baby, and so I can't wait to help him out. All right, so where we're going, this hotel, uh, is wrecked. I mean, that's really the only way I can describe it. Every hurricane, <laughs> you get a, a significant number of claims with a the people believe or they'll tell you that their building shifted or something. Sometimes you can find evidence where they're, they're right and then sometimes you can't. On this property, Bo, I'm telling you, a portion of the building moved. Did the whole building shift or just one wall? Like a portion of it. I, it's really hard to explain. When That's you get policy that. limits, man. Like there's serious structural problems. We're gonna have to get an engineer. We're gonna have to get uh, probably the city inspectors and people like that to come out. Like. This is, there's significant damage here. The, home, the owner loves the building, loves it. Obviously, it's his baby, you know, it's, it's his business. Of course. He, uh, I get it. And he's worried to death about water damage, ensuing water damages, mold issues, all that kind of stuff. So of course. What I'm seeing on this building, I'm seeing on lots of claims. I'm seeing damages that, there's, there's no universe this was a category four. No, it's category five. Watch it, they'll up it just like they did Hurricane Michael. Yeah. Just from the sheer pressure of, of people saying, no, this is a Cat 5, they'll, they'll up it. So at the hotel, we're going to meet up with Marianne. She's an estimator for Noble. Marianne basically almost every week has a record number of estimates that are written. And she's one of those people where, um, you know, if you brag on her, she just kind of uh, like puts her head down and, and, and tries not to smile kind of thing. And, it's great. So we're going to meet her and uh, see if she can't knock this out of the park for us. Marianne. Hey, Chris. How you doing? 
I'm doing good. How are good you? To see you? Good, good to, to see you. Good to see you. Hey, Bo. Hey, Mary Ann. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. Good. What are you seeing here? Uh, there's quite a few things to see, actually. Uh, first and foremost, the roof. It's, it needs to be replaced. There's a lot of damage. Some damage to the structure itself. Um, there's water intrusion on the inside. The rooms have water damage on the ceiling, the walls, and the floor. I can see they're, they're mitigating. That is correct. Have they got they... it a few days ago. Okay, so they've been at it for a while now. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, you know how far they are from completion or? Uh, it'll be a while. They just got one side of the building. There's still okay. a few more to do. Chris said this thing was wrecked and he wasn't lying. I mean, it's wind damage. It's an older building, structural damage. All the rooms need to be gutted. The pool was just nasty, filled with debris from Hurricane Ida. And so uh, this particular commercial property is gonna have to have a major overhaul. The property owner's concern is obviously the roof. So we wanna document the roof heavily in your estimating process. So tons of pictures, as many as you can, get all the measurements you need video if you need to he's probably going to go ahead and replace the roof and then we'll like retro ask for the money from the carrier with our demand but it'll stop the water because that's his concern is water when you walk on it it feels like a water bed that's that's the only way i can describe it it's yeah. just just wrecked absolutely wrecked the estimator has an extremely important role in the claim what they do is they're using software uh called exactament it's the same software the insurance company uses they use this software to put together an estimate uh, for the damages to the property. Basically, what is it gonna cost to, to fix everything? And this is extremely important. It's used to create our proof of loss, which is probably the most important step uh, in a claim anywhere, but especially here in Louisiana. Well, it looks like it's gonna be hard to repair a lot of this stuff. I think it's, you know, most of this stuff's gonna have to be totally replaced, don't you, Marianne? I agree, yes, definitely. So we have full roof replacement, mitigation tear out on the inside, Re, you know, replacing everything on the inside. She's taking care of the estimate for the putback. Structural right? issues. Correct. What about business interruption? We got that moving? We need to get that started definitely because so they can't function right now with all the rooms up. Well, we'll make sure, I'll make sure when we get the engineer report back, I'll get that Sound to over. you Perfect. quickly in case you need to make any modifications to your okay. already existing scope. Sounds good. I'll keep up with the BI as well, see if the CPA can okay. send us whatever documentation for that. Perfect. Yeah. Well, I know you're going to kill it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank Good you. to see you again. Good to see you. I see you, Thank you Ralph. Let see us know you. if you need anything. Uh, definitely. Thank All you. Right. Hello? Hey, Bo. I just got a lead. It's a referral from one of our previous clients, but it's way north of where we're at at the moment. They say they got a ton of damage. They've got an inspector coming, I think, around 1 o'clock. Think you can get there about 12 or so? Bo got a call for another claim before we even left the uh, job site we were on, but... Uh, this is the way the cookie crumbles, you know, from one to the next. So as we were leaving the property, got a call from Susan. There's a client, needs her help. Susan can't get to it. She's booked. She's way down in Homa. We're relatively close. And so we need to get there. The adjuster is actually coming this afternoon. So we need to get there quickly to see what's going on so we can help this lady. This is definitely a Cat 5 hurricane because that's the level damages I'm seeing in all these homes. People are going to need our help for years to come on this storm or something. It's, yeah. it's so widespread. I mean, it's not like a tornado, you know, where it's just one little area. It's when you get to a category four and five hurricane, the hurricane itself is so big. It's like a, it's like a tornado that's 17 miles wide, 150 mile per hour winds, sustained winds, maybe higher with wind gusts up to 200 miles per hour. And then the winds still spread out even farther than that, obviously. And it stayed that for like, it stayed that speed for like a hundred miles inland. You ever think we'll get to a spot where maybe someone invents some technique or material that can withstand a Cat 5 hurricane? that's not expensive. Think about this, you can do 3D printing with concrete, and if everyone started doing 3, 3D printing with concrete, mm. and then you had 3D printing, Homes which is would like, last longer. It's not labor intensive, they would last longer. Yeah. Anyway, where we are now is everybody needs their help. I don't know how bad this house we're going to is, but I, I hope it's not that bad, I hope we can help it. I'm excited to get here. We gotta get there quick, get my eyes on the loss and prepare myself in case I need to 
articulate any points to this adjuster that are important. And that's, that's one of the thrills of the, of the game, I guess. We, uh, we got to quickly get ourselves up to speed before that adjuster gets there. Wow, this is bad. Yeah. Man, it was a good thing that we showed up when we did. This lady, she's really gonna need her help. Photoshoot was a blast. Got to meet a lot of people that I hadn't met before. Meeting them in person now and getting to pick their brain a little bit farther was a lot of fun. And the photos were pretty fun too. We got to play around a little bit with that and um, get closer to everyone. The biggest takeaway from the meetings the last couple of days would be teamwork, integrity, accountability, honesty. It's really great. A lot of things that I've learned these past two days, I can apply to my daily life. We have leadership here that is open and willing to listen to anything that you have to say. They want to know what you love about the company, what you dislike about the company, and then they give everyone the opportunity to offer suggestions on how to fix that. And collectively, you know, we can all come together as a company and take part in those decisions. One of the most rewarding aspects of my job here at Noble would have to be the way we are able to help people while at the same time having the ability to thrive in our industry as one of the leading public adjusting groups. When you can stand there and hand a check to somebody for $220,000, when the insurance carrier said, eh, we'll give you 13,000, you can look in their face and see the joy and see the relief that they are going to rebuild their lives. It's just an unbelievable experience. Tonight's one of those gala events where we come together as a company in a public forum, have the opportunity of celebrating accomplishments in our city. Panama City Beach is our home city. In one sense, we're still recovering from a hurricane two and a half years ago, but Panama City Beach has done an amazing job of pulling together and recovering from a hard season. And the road is wide open. It's a blue sky open in front of Panama City. And tonight we get to celebrate that across the board with the community and the business in the sector. The first thing I thought when I got out of the car was, wow, this place was destroyed, essentially. Thank goodness nobody yeah. was in there, but yeah. wait till you see. Feel free to go in there. I've been in there so much. That's where my wedding dress was. Yeah? Did you get it? Uh-uh. And when you have a lot of damages, but the house is still standing, you can bet the insurance company is going to underpay you. So the insurance adjuster came over. I don't like him. 